Hey everyone, we're here with Forthright tonight. If you don't know them, you're missing out. They are badass uh, crossover band out of Evansville, Indiana. Just had a new EP come out that I've probably listened to four or five times today alone. Um, some some great like it's not all one sound. There's some other sounds in there, which is fucking like okay, I can get into this. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it, man. Yeah, that's that's definitely our goal is to be like super efficient with like our songwriting, but also not be one dimensional. So like that's always the goal. So I'm glad that uh, that's what you got out of it. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So what what was like? Well, I guess I'm going to start from the beginning. What brought the band together? Well, I mean, you're kind of looking at it. Yeah, (laughs) just just the two of us, man. We uh, I don't know. We we got together like i don't know it was like my freshman year of college and your sophomore year maybe Mm -hmm. yeah we went to high school together and like most local music scenes there's only like 10 people that are playing in bands always so like (laughs) only two of them are are drummers yeah yeah actually i was the first guy and uh yeah man yeah so like kind of from there you know uh, we actually started uh in 2016 it was uh, April 2016. We've been at it for about eight years now. Obviously, multiple different lineup changes and whatnot throughout the years. But um, uh, we started out wanting to be more like, honestly, like hard, like heavy the hard day, rock. Uh, like when you said, you said like heavier God smack. Yeah, we were like, we want to be like heavier God smack, bro. We you know, like, that's cool. And yeah. <laughs> I still like that mantra, but <laughs> I'm glad we've kind of evolved into something else. So, yeah. And like you know, as the sound, as the years have gone on, our sound has kind of molded into like primarily thrash is where we get our roots because we all love like old thrash bands and stuff like that. But then just little by little, kind of taking pieces of stuff that we're enjoying at the time, and honestly, of bands that we <clears throat> have the privilege of getting to play with, and we try and be influenced by them as well. So, yeah, it's hard to you know, Evansville's been a kind of a hotbed of cool shows over the past few years and it's hard to be on those shows and not be blown away by like what some of the touring bands will will do i think so you know mm-hmm. like we got to play with like no cure to an wounds and you know extinction and uh you know bands like that and it's i don't know i feel like you're kind of crazy if you if you watch a band like that and you're not kind of in, in awe and you're like oh my god i gotta do something like that we gotta we gotta incorporate this or that like <laughs> It's, I don't know, seeing bands and getting to play and open for bands like that is so sick. And I don't know, like it, it just finds your, for us, it finds its way kind of into what we, we, we're doing. So, Well, you know, I think bands at that level absolutely should inspire you, you yeah. know, because obviously you got into music because you absolutely enjoyed something. Maybe another performer did. You were just like blown away by it. So to be constantly like inspired by these bands that are out there doing the the thing, you know, touring, whether they're making a million dollars or a hundred bucks, you know, they're, they're out there doing it. And that's fuck. It takes a lot of balls to, you know, say, Hey, let's get in a van for six months this year and do something. Touring sucks, dude. Yeah. On paper, objectively it it sucks, but I mean, you're right though. It's like, it's, it's, you gotta, if you're wanting to be out there and do the thing, you gotta, you gotta do the thing. You gotta spread the music to the masses. So it's, uh, it's, it's been really great for us. Like, like he said, you know, here in Evansville, like the last two, three years, it's been like really, really big revival of the scene and like a bunch of new bands have come out and like, even that are local bands and stuff like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's been, it's been easy to be inspired by what's going on because, you know, there for a while here in Evansville, um, you know, it was kind of a little bit more dead, you know, it was, a, there wasn't as much going on because of a lack of venues. And so it's just been very easy over the past few years to be very inspired by that. And that's kind of what inspired this EP. It was kind of like a love letter to everything that's been going on around here, but in our specific way that we like to do things. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that sums it up pretty well. Yeah. That's, so that was kind of a, and you know, like, you know, the EP war of attrition, and like all of it is just kind of, it's kind of uh, based on the idea of what it means to be a creative or to be a musician, which is like, there's some times where you just, you soldier on because you're doing the thing and that's what you want to do. And it's, sometimes it's thankless. A lot of times it's not always super duper cool, but yeah. you, you keep doing it anyway, because it's, it's what you got to do and it's what you want to do. And so that's kind of, 
that's kind of like the pseudo theme of the the EP is like like standing in the face of uh, an what did I say it's like standing in the face of an unyielding reality and yes. persevering in yes. spite of it. We're also big fans of Gojira as well. Yeah. So big yeah. big ups to them and a lot of similar like themes. At least I try and rip for our lyrics and stuff. So <laughs> yes, it's definitely. Yeah. I think it's I think it's apparent if you were to sit down and look at the the lyric sheet or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you, Nick gets really really. Um, I don't know, you get definitely esoteric with like themes and it's, it gets kind of cerebral and I think that's definitely a little bit due to Gojira. Of course, love Gojira. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, good so. good for them for fucking playing the Olympics, dude. Oh dude, God. so cool. So I like just so happened to be, I think I was in, um, I was actually in Bloomington at the time having pizza with like my family. It was like a family get together and I looked up on the screen and I saw, Gojira. I couldn't hear it, of course, because we were in this crowded, like, crowded yeah. pizza place. So I was yeah. like, dude, that's Gojira. They're on the TV. It was so cool. I hated that, like, when it was happening, though, every fucking announcer would just talk over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's a band, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, dude, why we just want to hear them, please. They have three minutes. You got to shut up for two seconds. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, to, to, for any sort of metal band or ro- even oh. you know hard rock band to get mm-hmm. to that level is like i th- i think that's what everyone you know strives for i mean i, I i've read an article cuz i'm a big gojira fan too like i've loved those how dudes you, for a lot of years it, yeah yeah uh, but the day before i think uh was it the day before the day before they played I don't even remember. The number was like some something stupid, like I don't know, 1.5 million streams. Yeah. And the <laughs> like the day after was like I don't know, hundreds of millions. Like right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the ultimate pub- publicity for those guys. You know, not to be like, let's look at it from a marketing standpoint, but like, holy shit, the whole. I mean, they're on, they were on the world stage. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Everyone also, was watching. Also, there was controversy surrounding their performance for some reason. So, like, that definitely helped a lot, too. So, you know. Yeah, <laughs> which perpetuated it, little, it, right? Yeah. Like, it was and the it's... the least controversial thing, at least. It, it was. Yeah. It, you know, it's so crazy to think about. You're like, oh, you know, not not to use it as a marketing thing, but bullshit. Like, you, you get in there so you could play more music to more people and sell yeah. more records like yeah. for for them to hit there now more eyes come into just the heavy music world as a whole which helps everyone out yes yeah, for sure i'll never understand like the gatekeeping of when you see your favorite band get huge i'm like dude that's what it's what grows like not to make this a weird you know dramatic thing but that's what grows the community and that's what grows like you said listenership for just heavy music in general like you know it's and it's i I think it's grown more than ever i mean it's a good time to be a metalhead i mean metal's huge now you know i just saw knocked loose played in front of fifteen thousand people the other day yep knocked loose man they're the the band that's doing it yeah Yeah. like playing madison square garden i literally had a conversation about them yesterday like you know so i live in louisville they're from like right here oh yeah that's like hometown heroes Yeah. Yeah. yeah so when they uh, when they did the album release show at Paris Town Hall the night before those two shows, they played a little rinky dink show in a 350 seat venue. Right. Oh, wasn't it with Torture? Yeah, it was yeah, Torture. I heard about uh, that. X I heard Weapon about that. X, Gates to Hell. Oh, dude, yeah. that was insane. See, that's the show I wanted to go to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd have been cool, man. That that was I was like if I, like I I didn't see them before right that was my first time seeing them and oh, and God. like that type of band I don't want to see them in a big venue I want to see them no. in a, a small intimate place like like you guys like damsels dude with fifty or a hundred people just fucking crowded in there is like oh, yeah. you know, that's where you want to be well this venue was like that wall to wall yep. yeah I can you only know? imagine yeah you're like dude, holy especially- shit. Yeah, especially at the time, because Torture, that was, like, as they were blown up and being huge, too. So, like, obviously it was cool because Knock Loose was there. But I know a lot of people from Evansville went because they were like, dude, Torture's playing. We got yeah, we got to yeah. go see them yeah. with Knock Loose, you know? So it's a really, like, perfect storm of, like, hype for that. Obviously, the other shows were big, too. But, like, for that one show you're talking about, yeah, yeah there were some people who went, to. They said it was insane. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was so many black eyes. I actually saw Torture Saturday at the obituary show. Oh, oh nice. Shit. Yeah, dude. Wait, didn't 
wasn't uh, there a band on there called Draped in Black too? Yep. That's our friend Hunter boy. Oh, yeah, Hunter. Hunter yeah, Hunter. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, small world. Yep. Man. For sure, it was Draped in Black, Chasm, Torture, and Obituary. Damn, that's wow, probably a really so good show, good. man. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Was a really good show. Um, I always, you know, a butch, obituary. They've been around so long. Like you know, when you go to their show, exactly what you're getting. It's gonna yeah. be a good time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that that's always fun. So, speaking of like bigger bands, sure. if there was a band that said, "Hey, you guys want to go out on tour and and hang out with us," like what would your ultimate band be? That's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, why don't you go, why don't you say, Eddie? Um. I don't know. I mean, I, me and Nick are similar in this. We talked about this the other day and we did this other podcast, but um, we kind of like everything. So it's hard for me to narrow down one answer. I think it's going to depend on the day. So but Taylor like, Swift, I got you. Oh, yeah, obviously. Dude, yeah. I mean, if we're That's talking a... paying the bills, then yeah. absolutely, dog. You know, <laughs> no, but <no>. artistically, <laughs> bands that we would maybe you know, come within the realm of fitting with, like... No, it doesn't, know, like, like, honestly, it doesn't matter if you fit or not. It's who do you want to go out on the road with? Oh. Uh, for me, it'd be, like, probably Deftones. Like, that's, like, one of my favorite bands ever. They just oh. announced that tour with the Mars Volta. Yes, they did. So, me and Emily were just talking about... Oh, you were? Take us to that. Yeah, of course, yeah. In, so are you guys funny. going to Indianapolis? Um, We're debating on that or Nashville... It's mm. just gonna depend on like what day I can get off work, but that'll be my second time seeing them, and I I, I I gotta go again. Like, I love that band, man. Yeah, that's yeah. like so. Deftones is like our one of our family bands. So if we go oh. see them, me, my wife, and my kids, we all go. Oh, that's um, so sick, dude. Yeah, it's fun nice. shit. Like, yeah. we'll we'll pro. I think what we'll do is what we did last time. We'll do Nashville, Indianapolis, and Detroit. Oh, cool. so you're doing all three? Hell yeah, yeah. Damn, dude. That'd be cool. That's dope. yeah, dude. My kids, my kids have seen Deftones. I would say twenty times at this point. Dang, lucky <laughs> kids! Yeah. Lucky kids, dude. <laughs> yeah, there, that's awesome, that, man. Bro. Yeah, no, they're they're good kids. They're they were a lot of fun. Like we did 20, 2017, We were like, hey, we have I think three pl- like three ideas for vacation what do you guys want to do? One was like, go to Florida. One was, I don't know, go up North Michigan. And the other was go, go see Deftones and Guns N' Roses in Minneapolis. And both the kids were like, Oh, Oh, we're going to see, they were like Deftones. Like, hell yeah, let's go. Yeah. That's a sick family vacation. That that's awesome, man. Yeah, dude. That's a, that's a good answer though. Deftones. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, okay, we mentioned them earlier, so I, I got to say it again. It'd probably be Gojira or, like, Mastodon. I oh, saw Gojira yeah. and Mastodon yeah. on that tour they came through in Nashville a few years ago. Oh, it was last year. Yeah, it was. Uh, like, dude, that feels like five years ago, man. I, I was uh, there. <laughs> oh, we did see him in Chicago. Chicago yeah. Open Air we was... saw Gojira at Chicago Open Air. Well, with... Mastodon was there, too. No, Mastodon wasn't. wasn't. You're thinking of System of a Down and Tool, bro. I don't know anymore. Yeah, that was pre-COVID, so... But um, but no, I would say probably Gojira or Mastodon. But if we're talking more like somebody more realistically, like I think getting to go on tour with a band like fucking Orthodox exactly or No Cure say. or like one of those we bands that's Orthodox. really that's really kind of fucking they're 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 doing it and they're doing it in a big way, but they're not at the point where they're like huge like mainstream it's successes. Not like on a stadium, it's like yeah. maybe one day this is something we could hopefully do yeah. if we put out the right music and. We talk to the right guy or whatever, yeah. you know. We also just love those bands. Like, I mean, they're yeah. talk that again, going back to bands that are like inspiring to us is like not that big bands aren't inspiring to us as peers, but like, you know, that's a band you see and you're like, Well, that's an attainable goal if we just like put our mind yeah. to it and actually like do some good work. Cause those guys are out there, those bands are killing it, man. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing for a lot of bands to really realize though, is like when you're in a band, it's not just, we're going to play music and go play some shows, right? Like we'll play one show every six months or, you know, a couple shows. Like if you want it to be something, you get out there and you have to grind it to get there. And it's, you know, as, as shitty as it is, there's, 
sleepless nights and some foodless days and it, it sucks i mean there's no way to sugarcoat it i mean of course you have your special cases where you'll have a band blow up overnight and most of those aren't even overnight people will say people anytime i talk about knock loose i know that they're a worn out subject at this point but anytime i bring up them up or, or i'm having a conversation people love to tell me oh that band blew up overnight i'm like the fuck are you talking about like no, i right. played shows with those guys 11 years ago in front of no nobody nobody like those yeah. guys worked harder than anybody and that's why they're where they're at you know? yeah do you guys know surfaced yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah I, we actually just we played, played with them the other day in our other bands uh we're in another band called narcotic rod it's like a death metal slam band and we played a show at with spinelli's at spinelli's with uh them mouth for war which is where i got this shirt yeah. Uh, and then also 10, Ten to the Chest. chest. 10 to the Chest, tight. too. It was, it was a great show. Fun. Yeah. Those cool. bands were nuts, dude. Plus, yeah. the new Spinelli is just so sick. It is. It's really cool. Where at? Where's it at? Uh, it was just a downtown location. All I know is from, we got booked on there from our friend Hunt, who the guy, he's in Draped in Black and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and uh, it's it's downtown, I know. I'm not going to lie. I don't go It's at 4th and Chestnut, I think. Yes, yes, right. yes, it That's was that, because I remember thinking fourth, interesting, you know, we're close to third, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, no, uh, really cool. Uh, that's my first time ever being there. I know Eddie's been there in the past, like at the older location. Yeah, the old Spinelli is like I had, you know, yeah. a chance to go there and play there a few times, and it was, um, one of my old bands, Strict, got to play at the old Spinelli's, like, I think it was their last show before COVID happened, it was like very end of 2020, and, I think we played with Bugging Out or, or I don't even remember who it was, Magnitude or something like that. It was it was a dope band though, whoever it was. But yeah, that place was sick, but it was really really small. So this place is it's uh, the new Spinelli's is a little bigger and a little more accessible. It seems like so I'm uh, I I can't wait to play there again or just go to a show there again. Yeah, I, you know I've yeah. not been to a show there the last. The last show I was going to, I almost went to that show that you guys are talking about. Oh, okay. Hey, you would have seen uh, us open in our other yeah. band. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would have been funny. You'd have seen us like twice in three did. days. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what happened. Uh, probably work, whatever. Um, yeah. But like Surfaced is, Surfaced is another band that's out there doing it. I mean, I think they've, they've hit two or three tours at, at some point this year. Um, they're probably on tour right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Well, they're excellent, too. I mean, you know, I so we played with them with Forthright, and it, I think it was like the first or second show or yeah. something. Like, it was they like were, last July. They were green, green. They showed up, and like they barely had working gear. And I was like, oh, you know, there's some young kids, whatever. And they got up and ripped it. And I said, oh, shit. Yeah. These yeah. guys are not to be messed with. Like, these guys got something. And then seeing how like that band was great back then but seeing how good they've gotten just in the course of like a year maybe a hair more is wild like i i you know i was at the show the other night and my girlfriend had work early and i was like we need to stay for a few more songs i can't not watch this it's so good like i couldn't look away from it and yeah I don't know those I mean, they're they're putting the work in and it obviously shows you know? yeah, I, yeah i saw them uh, Belushi Speedball had an album release in May, yeah. mm -hmm. and they yeah. they played that show. And that that place, I don't know, six or seven hundred kids packed into headliners. And yeah. JP was up there, just like, "Hey, do this," and the crowd like did that. And I'm like, "Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah." yeah. It's he, pretty cool. Oh, there's dear. The magic in that when someone can truly command an audience because they, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing worse than seeing room full of people just stand there like mannequins want when you know they're you know the band up there is trying to elicit a reaction it's just not taking yeah but you know the the opposite of that is just so wild to see and yeah mm -hmm. that, that band is definitely worthy of commanding that presence i think they're yeah yeah killer. yeah then the thing nobody ever talks about though is to get to that point where you can do that there's for every like two or three shows where you've got that there's like 10 to 15 shows of, hey, there's 10 people here and nobody's right. paying attention to you. Like, like <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was like comic <laughs> terminology. Like, it, you have to have a couple shows where you bomb, you know? Mm -hmm. like, you, gotta, you gotta go up there and 
whether you do good or not, you got to play to a room full of people that are looking at you like, I don't know if I need to get a cigarette or yeah. <laughs> yeah. what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, that's all part of it. But, it, yeah. you know, like, like you said, like they've, they've made this progress so fast. Yes. Uh, what was it? First show they were playing with Prison, I think, first time I saw them. And I was like, yeah, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Right? Like that was a good show. And then, oh, and then I saw him with Southpaw. Nice. Um, that run with Southpaw. And then mm -hmm. it was Belushi Speedball. And I was like, oh, all right. We could, we can get into this. Uh, yeah. But they were great. They were great every time. Just as you said, they, they really grew into their like stage legs there. Yes. Yeah. Most definitely. It's really good to see younger. I mean, I say younger. I mean, because they, I mean, they are younger than us. Right. You know? It's good to see like, you know, younger bands doing that and finding that confidence early because, you know, um, like I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, if I think about the stuff that we made when we were like 19, 20 and 21, I'm like, I look back on it now and I'm like, yeah, a lot of it's actually <laughs> unlistenable. So like it's. It's cool to see bands make genuinely good music that young. You yeah. Know, that, like that show that you saw us at with Extinction, the opening band uh, Devour. Uh, you know they're Evansville locals, and I think they're 16. they're literally like sixteen and seventeen. Like they are like, like they high are schoolers. Kids. You know, it's like they have to leave to go to school the next day. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's great, and there's been a lot of really really young bands here in the Evansville scene. Like a great example, we we played a um, a a fest here in Evansville last weekend called Fuchsia Fest. More of like an alternative, uh, like more of an alternative and like post hardcore band. I had some friends that play that. Yeah, and like. Uh, Shatterhand uh, is a band from here. It's the same thing. Like they're all very, very young, but like they just released their first EP, and I listened to it, and I was like, "This is like actually good. This is no not shit. just like, gave, gave me chills." Yeah, it's and like not like because you know, like and I'm sure you've been there. Like you go to a show and you know you see whoever played, and you're like, "Oh, good set." Like it's fucking T-ball or something. Yeah, you know, everybody says good game, but yeah. It's really weird when you're not just going through the motions of like, I'm going to be nice to this guy because they seem like a nice person. And you're like, oh, wow, that was, you, you did something. They're like, that was so sick. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of young, young kids where I'm like, yeah. I don't even have to pretend that was good. You just fucking killed it. Like, yeah. that was amazing. So it's, it's really been inspiring. Like I said, going back to being inspired, it's been very inspiring for us to, you know, <clears throat> we've been a band for eight years now, but it really feels like this last two or three years is really the most that things have taken off for our local scene. And for us, you know, we don't play, we don't play a huge part in it. Like for instance, when I say that, I mean, we're not people who book shows and stuff like yeah. that. You know, we're not people who are putting on shows. Um, but at the same time, like uh, it's been very inspiring for us to uh, still be a part of it in the ways that we've been able to. And part of that is the joy of seeing like a bunch of really young bands grow and starting to get their legs and, you know, just honestly, just having fun and yeah. like, uh, like realizing that like it's about the community. It's about making awesome shit with your friends and having a good time. Like that's really what it all comes down to. So yeah, it's tight. Yeah, well, that's that's the way it should be, right? Like yeah, like we're just gonna go have a good time with our friends. Let's play some music, drink some beer, do whatever we're gonna do, and yeah, yeah. you know, see what happens. And that's I think that's where most fans really really start, right? Obviously, you've got the bands who are like. I'm going to play because I want to get, you know, more women or, you know, whatever. Yeah, for the wrong reasons. For yeah. the wrong reasons. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, the, the bands that actually last aren't, they're out there because they're, they're playing, trying to think how to explain it. Um, they're playing music that they are, that they want to, right. That they're inspired to play or, yeah. and, or it's, they're missing something in the music they're hearing and they're like, Oh, this is what I'm, I'm missing. This is what right. I want to do. Well, it's, it's music. It's music for music's sake. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. I've always thought that was a cool phrase. I don't remember who said it. It was like Mozart or something. It's like some, some old dude, some old guy. Some some old dude. Old guy who's dead now. But, like, probably not, like, yeah. Cool concept. You know, <laughs> just making something because you're like, ah, I think this needs to be made and I like it. And for no other reason, no ulterior motive, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, that's usually the most honest form of expression, I think. And I, I can respect that. I think yeah. that's cool. Whether I like somebody's stuff or not, if they're honest and genuine about it, I'm like, 
that's sick. You know, you do your thing, even if I don't like it, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's something I feel like, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's something that I feel like we, you don't get, maybe, maybe you don't get a lot of nowadays is the idea that like, Hey, even though what you're doing is not my cup of tea, like I still very much respect that you're doing it because it takes effort to do. You yes. know, I feel like, uh, it's funny. We were talking about this on, on the other podcast is like, uh, like we as musicians and just as like people who enjoy music, we are very open. I like, I joke that I have no discernible taste because I can usually anything I can find something in it that I like. Yeah. And, uh, it's because like, I think having a mindset where you are defined more by what you don't like, as opposed by what you do like is sort of a, it, it's something that, uh, overall can be, pretty uh negative outlook i think you know like you know we've all met people who they define themselves by what they hate or like yeah. what they don't like about music rather than bands that they do like about music and you know it's you know sometimes that's in the form of people who are elitist and whatnot but like i think y'all know what i'm talking about when you meet the the guy who like you try and talk to them and immediately just everything you've listed off they're like i hate that band that's awful that's and i'm stupid. like stupid i only listen to this thing you've never heard like of. cool man all right i'm just trying to connect with you about you know some cool stuff you don't, but... you don't, you don't have to talk guys yeah well I th you know people people miss that though like the, the biggest thing i think for humans uh, that we need is that human connection so yeah. having that conversation and someone shutting you down it's like oh all right Connection yeah, canceled. I'm out of connects. here, bro. That's yeah. Right. True. Go like, yeah. Go shit on the, someone's porch or whatever you're going to yep. do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we try and moving forward, we try to define ourselves by things that we do like and we do enjoy. And we also, um, uh, we've tried to, I feel like it's really easy when you're making music and you're doing anything creative. It's really easy to view it as competitive where it's like, I got to be better than everybody. I got to have more of this. I got to have more of that. I got to have people recognize that I'm the coolest person. Yeah. And like, I feel like these last couple of years have really opened our eyes to the fact that music isn't really competitive. It's collaborative. Yes. Mm. And yeah. it's like what I said, it's about just trying to make awesome stuff happen with your friends. And if you're constantly trying to compare yourself to everybody around you and be competitive with them, like, it's just, it's not conducive to actually making the best things, in our opinion. I, it doesn't leave so, anything good. Yeah. I think there's a healthy level of competition. Of course. Sure. Yeah. You know? I, so, I, 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 yes. I think, you know, I, I agree with everything Nick just said, but I, I definitely, when I go to a show and I see, a, you know, no matter where it's at, if it happens to be a band before us and their drummer's just ripping, I'm like... Oh, I gotta play better than that guy. And it's not like, oh, I suck if I don't. But I'm like, I want to make, I want to play that much better to make that guy say the same thing. And, yeah. You know, everybody pushes everybody, and I think that that can definitely be a good thing. That that's where that healthy level of competition is, right? Yeah. It's not. It's not, man. Fuck you. I'm better than you. It's oh, right. you did fucking awesome. Now I have to top you. Right. I gotta one up you, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I gotta I will, be better, dude. But like, yeah. I gotta yeah. at least try to. Well, and by the way, that thing you did with your foot and that second song right in the middle that was fucking dope. How yeah. do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what thing? No, he's saying that's an <laughs> example. Like he's oh, all oh, talking. I, like, yeah. I thought it was a genuine question. No. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember. Man. No. No, this guy, so he sorry. just, he just, he just waves his limbs around and shit while he's drumming, you know? I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what so happened, much. but we're done. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. Genuinely, we just, that's it. we just played, we just played our new EP and that's it. Anytime so. anybody <laughs> ever asked me, that's my preloaded response. Anytime anybody asked me to break something down, I don't, and then I don't know. I don't know any, <laughs> any technicalities. I'm just like, I don't know. I like this band and this drummer and that's that's it like, i can't explain shit about <laughs> drums. i have no idea yeah that's, you know you don't have to that's totally cool right why would you why would you need to explain anything why right. just do just, yeah 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 like i can't read music who gives a fuck yeah <laughs> i cannot yeah. No way, dude. yeah neither yeah. can i Played instruments yeah. for a lot of years, and it's like uh, I don't want to read music. I just want to play and play what I, I, I feel. In high school, when I I forgot. I have a couple of music projects where I still have to from time to time, and every time I do, I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. Uh, I got to remember how to do this, <laughs> you know. But like yeah. people who can do it, like 
I'm in a couple of musical projects with like classically trained musicians, I guess, as you'd call it. And seeing them be able to like read down a score or something and like sight read, like for instance, if you're a piano player, just being able to like sight read down something and play it immediately. It's like magic. It's like, wow. Okay. So like they just gave you that piece of music. You can just play it, dude. All right. We'll go off then. I see you went to college for this. Right. Cool. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> you spent a bunch All of right, money. Mr. I didn't spend any and I can't do a fucking thing, but I can still play. Uh -huh. Exactly. I'm over here waiting to play the guitar solo. So. Yeah. 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 Like like uh Matt Damon. Matt Damon? I don't know. One of the fucking one of those northeastern guys. How you like them apples? Yeah. 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 Of course, indeed. One of the best movie scenes in the yeah. world. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that was hilarious. I, I, I like seeing the clip come around on my socials. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch that clip because it's funny as hell. That's Got the you. sickest movie, by the way, not to derail. <laughs> it makes me cry. <laughs> Rob Williams just keeps going, it's not your fault. He goes, I know, it's not your fault. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, but it makes me cry. So I'm like, yeah. yeah, that's one of the dudes that I miss a lot too, Robin Williams. Oh. He is fucking great. It yeah. hurts my heart that he's gone. He was too good for this world, man. He was, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, hey, can I ask you a question, sir? I know you're asking us questions. But Absolutely. So you've listened to our EP allegedly four to five times today. <laughs> okay. What's your uh, What's the track that stands out to you on it? What's your favorite from it? And if so, why? Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to pull it up, and I'll tell you. Let's Sit. go. Because <laughs> i got to remember the name. Uh, it's, dead to, it's Dead to Rights. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, that's not surprising. I really like that song, too. But why so? Just because, like, it really switches up in there. Um, you know, it's going, and then it changes, and you're like, whoa, what was that? And then it's back, and you're like, all right. And then it changes again, and you're like, whoa, what was that? Like, I, you know, I, growing up, I was very much like, this is what I listen to. I only want this. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, as I get older, I'm going to tell you, I'm pushing 50 now. Yeah. So... Yeah, the older I get, the more I really try to push like my musical boundaries, and that that track specifically stands out to me. And it's funny you ask that because I was like, I gotta remember the name to that fucking song, and I literally, I, I listened to it. I was where did I go? I was driving in my car out to like Lagrange or something. Yeah, and I yeah. fucking listened to it, and I was like, oh shit, that track is fucking killer. Thanks, man. Like, Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that features uh features our good friend Mason Bradley yeah. from, from uh, Robline. Robline. He's also in another uh, band called A Modest Proposal. He plays bass and does some vocals in that as well. But um, yeah, that was one of ours. You know, like for us when we were making this EP, that was one thing we wanted to do that we've never done before in yeah. all of the never, releases. Never done features. Never done any features, and it was partially because of some other stuff with previous members. It's it's not a huge deal, but like. So when we were thinking about like people we wanted to be on it, I think we played a show with uh, a ba that band we were talking about, Grow Blind, at a bookstore. Yes, that's what it was. At a, at a bookstore. It was, it was your bookstore. At your brother's bookstore. At your brother's bookstore in downtown Evansville. It was like one of the touring bands dropped at the last minute. So on the day of the show, the guy who was promoting, his name is Darren Harger. Love him. Great guy. He's the drummer of that band. It's his birthday band. today, by the way. It's his birthday today, by the way. Yeah, I know. He, uh, <laughs> he, um, he... Uh, just text was like hey can you guys like uh like touring band had a drop can you guys come play like just a 15 minute set or something like in two hours and we're all local except for one of our guitar players and we were like yeah we could probably get it together and uh you know we played just the three of us without our other guitar player yeah. um and uh that band grow blind was like the headliner like you know they were the they were the last band that was playing and immediately when I saw them, I was like, yo, we need to get this guy yeah. to be on this song because like I already kind of had loosely the song written and I was like, it would be perfect for his vocal style and everything. And uh, that show was so insane, man. It was it, like, I'm how it was like, what, like a 20, like a 30 foot by 10 foot shotgun tiny, room. Tiny, tiny bookstore. Yeah. yeah. And like just nothing but like a bunch of sweaty kids uh like you know yes. going doing side to sides like almost knocking over shelves and stuff is really cool it's yeah, a great it's time. rowdy and fun and awesome and yeah yeah i think that was like the perfect song because yeah. that band sounds like i don't know, like early turnstile and that sort of stuff like a little tui in there mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. that song like i don't know 
what you view it as, but I've always thought it sounded like like the choruses sound like TUI or something, and then the yeah. rest of it sounds like System of a Down or something. And the culmination of those things, I think, definitely lends itself to that dude being on it. So yeah. I think it made perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I'm glad that's your favorite track, by the way. Yeah. Like, like you weren't expecting me to come up with something so fast, were you? No, no. not at all. <laughs> that's why I said allegedly listen to it. <laughs> I was literally listening to it before you guys pulled up or before you got on, too. Like, I, I like to, like, sit down and kind of get, like, Okay, I'm gonna yeah. listen to the band because those questions come up, and I don't want to be the dumbass. It's like right. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know you know, yeah. like right. like good no, oh, they're all yeah. good. Like yeah, good and, on you for doing your research, then. <laughs> and it's funny that yeah, I'm like no, and it changes, and you're like, I could see your face, like oh, he did listen to it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like respect. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, and then the other feature we had was that uh, was the song Guillotine featuring Nick Erickson from Cohen. Yeah, which um so this guy here is the drummer for cohen so like yeah. that's like our brother band you know yes. him and then our bass player christian, christian yeah. are the drummer and bass player for cohen and also their cohen's guitarist kenton uh kenton smith yes is the one who mixed and mastered this whole yeah. ep he did it right on yeah awesome. so like you know we're you know we're like that so um but uh we when we were thinking of people to do features um i was it just made sense to have nick because i was like he shot music videos for us he's insane vocalist knew that there was like that part in the song like the kind of creepy quiet section i was like that'd be perfect for him like that's yeah. kind of like what he does really well and uh it just got yeah it just kind of all came together and it was couldn't be happier with the features that we got on it i think they lend themselves to the style of the ep well without detracting and derailing the vibe too much so i i agree yeah. with that you know there's a there's a band uh out of california they're a new band that yeah. they're called the barbarians of california okay and it's it's the awol nation dude okay. and okay. um and this dude uh eric eric stenman who was in this this alternative band tenfeld but he i think he produced some of like a wall nation stuff too like their buddies gotcha. uh, and the fucking album they have coming out is like it's like a punk hardcore album cool nice yeah but it it does what what that fucking song does like and it stops and it takes you in a direction you're like what in the fuck is this yeah i'm <laughs> curious to hear that yeah. oh dude it it's is now no, no, it comes out um, October fourth, I think. Okay, well, nice, cool. I'm gonna all keep right. an eye out for that. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's uh, <laughs> not to derail you at all, but uh, so that you <laughs> hear the the dude from the neighborhoods uh, hardcore band he came mm -mm. out with. Uh, I think they're called Valley Girl, and yeah, it's it's the singer for the neighborhood, and he came out with just a straight up hardcore band. And the first show they had was, I mean, it looked like a local band's first show is in front of nobody with like a shitty PA and stuff. And like, dude, this guy plays in front of, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 people every show. And then he's like, no, I want to do this now. And it's actually really dope. And it's, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's cool to see guys from like, bands like the neighborhood and apparently a wall nation <laughs> putting out music like that. Like, I don't know. It just goes to show that people like that shit, man. You know? Well, it's, yeah. you know, it, it goes kind of back to what we were talking about before is like you, you want to, you play music that you want to play yeah. yeah, and not, you know, you, you don't do it for any other reason than you play music to play music, you know? Yeah. It's by mm -hmm. far the most fulfilling way to do it. I mean, I've definitely done most all the no-nos Nick said, as far <laughs> as this is the reason I'm doing this, whether it's, I want to impress this girl or I want to look cool or I want them to go, Oh my God, he's clearly better than us or whatever. And every time I've tried to do that, it, it has failed miserably. Like, uh, and you know, if that was the only reasons I played music, I would not be doing it at all anymore. I would have found something else to do. I would have got a, you know, a big barrel of uh, Lincoln long or something else. New hobby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, uh, look at this cabin I built, honey. Let's, yeah. let's do it. You know, get some model trains going around it, bro. Dude, you can get bitches via Lincoln. 
<laughs> they always say, like, oh, be in a band. Girls love bands. No, they don't. They like guys that have Lincoln Logs. They like the Lincoln right. Logs, man. Saying, man that's, it's all right. That's where it's at. <laughs> so I got my wife, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Women swoon in droves. They Dude. see you with a canister of Lincoln Logs. If you got the Lincoln Logs, they know you got the scratch. That's so That's... true, though. You're right. The name brand Lincoln Logs. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no Costco. Oh, God. Who knew we were going to be a Lincoln Logs commercial tonight? What can we say? It's just the way of the world. You know, capitalism. <laughs> what can we say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. shit. So can we get a sponsorship there, Lincoln Logs? Yes, yeah. please. Somebody give us money to play <laughs> yes, music please. consistently. I would, yeah, I'd be happy with that. I'd love that. to have that be our only sponsor somehow. Lincoln Logs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. I like that. The, yeah. And the commercial could be, you didn't know you could get bitches with Lincoln Logs, huh? Yes. Yep, well, there that's, you go. That's the tagline. That's the tagline. Yes. They've been kind of waiting for you know a comeback here lately, and that might just be it. That might be their campaign. Yes, you know? they're waiting for us. We've seen a lot of bad commercials where like people were like you know Pepsi is pandering to like the, all the riots and shit. It's gonna be the opposite of that. Ah, uh, yeah. Everybody would love if Lincoln Logs came out with a you know get bitches. Yo, you guys need to like write the yeah. Lincoln Logs song now. True. Yes. That's very true. Yes. We'll get on that. We'll get on that. We can whip can, that up. Hell yeah. Whip it up and, right quick, you know? and then do like a spoof video of like just building all these things and yeah. wearing the gold chains. and. <laughs> I love it. I'm getting big like boats and hose vibes from this, you know, like uh, from Step Brothers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. But with Lincoln Logs. <laughs> we can whip up a song. We can whip up a song. Yeah, that'd, that'd be hilarious. Uh, yeah. I, I think if you guys did it, it would go viral. Hey, hey, you want to know, you want to talk about being a musician and something we never thought we'd have to think about as musicians, making content that goes yeah. viral so that people can like us on TikTok and stuff like that. I hate it. Jesus, that is something 12 year old me learning how to play guitar never could have seen coming. And Lordy, no. do I hate it more than anything else. <laughs> Dude, if I have to see one more TikTok that goes guess which one of us is the drummer or do you like bands that sound like x or y dude i'm gonna stick a toothpick under my toenail and kick a wall i'm so sick of it i'm so sick of it i hate it yes yeah, so for those of you who couldn't those, tell we're old we're, yeah. we're older you know? <laughs> those videos like they do something though there's no, a reason you see so many of them they work man I, I, Sadly, they work. I feel like yeah. the the bad part is though they never get they like get pick up an algorithm, but then that's just a band that has that video and nobody listens to their songs. Yeah, yeah. true. Or at least that's what I'm telling myself to. It's what we're telling ourselves to make ourselves so feel better because I mean, we don't want to play the game. Right? Maybe maybe you should think about it another way. Maybe they picked up a lot of fans from that stupid ass. You're probably video. right. You they know, could. man. They definitely could. I don't know, though. <laughs> I, I no, will say, right. like, if, if a band's music actually catches on and, like, triggers that algorithm, like, that's how Sleep Tell can blow up. Yeah, dude. Like, they, they were a decently big band. Not not big, big, but, like, you know, they were they were a band that you'd see play with, like, um, like Thornhill or something or, you know, whatever. They were cool, like a 200,000-ish monthly listener type of band. And then they put out a song that caught on on TikTok, and holy shit, like ten times their listenership overnight. Yeah, like, that you you go to bed, and you wake up the next day, and you have two million listeners. Because that's yeah. so. I've got a buddy that um, he manages artists, and he's more in the <laughs> pop, like more in the pop realm. But so I'm I'm talking to him. He signed this dude. I guess two or three years ago, we were talking. He said, "Dude, I got this guy that emailed me yesterday. That's like, hey, I." you know i i want you to like manage me and blah 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 and so he said hey you've got x amount of days to get this many like followers on tiktok mm -hmm. and it was uh what was he at he was at like 500 or 800 or something i'm and not the, very big yeah the, the goal was a million in like a month Jeez, wow at the at the end of a month he broke like two two million or something like absolutely ridiculous ridiculous just, Lordy. just firing it off and then he sat signed a contract with republic for three quarter of a million dollars gosh dang it man oh, what world are we live in yeah right? like why can't we just so have crazy, somebody dude. come to our show and go you got potential kid yeah <laughs> yeah 
like and that that's the thing though it's so crazy because then okay you're talking about like you were talking about earlier being in a band it's not just let's go out let's write some music and do a show now yeah. it is let's go out do some shows let's try and book some tours let's create an online presence and get followers on all of these various media like uh platforms and stuff like let's, that let's upload our music ourselves let's upload and, our music ourselves yeah, yeah. It's, it's not you know let's make cds and see no. if they, you know, people no. make copies of them anymore it's, yeah it's it's this whole thing but like people talk it's not just writing music and playing it live and putting it out at least not if you want to keep doing it and right. and not fund it because that's the thing that people also don't realize being in a band it's really expensive it's expensive man it takes money it's not something that even if you have all the gear you need to make music okay are you going to record yourself are you going to solely mix and master yourself because if so it's not going to sound as good as some no. other bands unless you have experience well we we've, um, we've just after eight years got to the point where we're self-sustaining yeah and that's you know a lot of that is is truly because we have the right you know connections with people we know that'll give us a, a good hookup with you know recording costs or a video or whatever but you know we've just now got to that point where art we're sustaining with merch and you know we don't have to pay out of pocket for things anymore and it's I never thought that was even possible, man. <laughs> yeah, but like that's that's the that's the goal for a lot of people, you know. And uh, it's just, you know, because <laughs> playing music's great, it's awesome. But then when it's like, oh hey, okay, you guys want to put out an EP or an album? Okay, let's total up all the things it's going to cost to put that together. And even if you're doing it conservatively, you're still talking like at least three grand if you want to do it somewhat right. Yeah. And if yeah, you've got yeah. really good connections on tracking and mixing and mastering and stuff like that you know four to six song ep mike that's not nothing to shake a stick at so you've got to have some way to make yeah. money as a band which obviously number one thing is merch if you're playing shows gotta have merch things like that merch that people want to buy and looks cool yeah not just not just like a t-shirt yeah, with your you logo just on get it, an, you know? an, an iron on and a black tee like yeah you might sell a few the first time you do it but you know you have to keep it somewhat interesting for, yeah. for people you know yeah so it's i don't know it's just it's very interesting to uh like you said we're now to the point thankfully where we can be self-sufficient uh unless there's like some super big thing that comes along that we want to do or yeah. something like that you know if we want to splurge for like a super crazy music video or something yeah. but like you know it's uh it's definitely it's something that again when you're first starting a band those are things you don't think about because you don't have the experience to know that that's what you're going to need to be accounting for. And um, it's, well, yeah, we feel very fortunate to be able to be at the point now where we can do what we want and not have to personally pay for it. So that's how many people got into bands not realizing that a band is a business. Yeah, seriously, man. It, you know, is, you know, and that's yeah. Yeah. All, all that money you, you put into it, you know, over the, you know, the previous six, seven years, you know, to be to a point like, okay, like, it's it's at least paying for itself now yeah we're not making anything yet but it's paying for itself like that's cool yeah sure. it's an now, investment yeah, yeah. it absolutely is <laughs> yeah it's but it's an, an investment in it's yourself an investment like a lottery ticket's an investment. <laughs> yeah like a german car dude. yeah but it's you know it's it's investing in yourself so that down the road you can do what you want to do and you yes. know like we're yeah, exactly we're we're, we're fortunate Maybe fortunate in the sense that we are only beholden to ourselves in terms of we're not beholden to a label, not we're not beholden to any contracts or anything. So anything we want to do right. we have is no free. one to answer to, and it's yeah, so 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 sick. Yeah, if we want to switch up and make like a power violence grind album, we could do that Whatever if we, we wanted want. to. Like, if, no, there's nobody yeah. to tell us no. Yeah. And that's very freeing and it's very liberating. And it, it, it makes all of the work that's led up to these years worth it. Because now at the end here, we're just able to do what we want to do whenever yeah. we want to do it within reason, of course. Well, <laughs> so. and that's, you know, I, I think, you know, just on that, right. Some bands, you have bands that play, you know, the same thing every time, like ACDC, right? Like they're oh, good yeah. and you know what you're getting every single fucking album. There's no no questions, right? But then you've got 
other bands that like they switch up from album to album like deftones right you cannot put mm -hmm. two oh, records yeah. of theirs together Every and go oh record is different mm -hmm. yeah and it's yeah. you know it's got cool. a really a really unique discernible sound and you can tell what you play any part of any song and you know what album it came off of you always and you always know it's them too it's it's always so unique to the brand you know it's not like it's <sighs> there's always a fine line you walk with wanting to get into experimental. You know, I've heard bands where it's like, they're like, well, we like everything. And I get it. We've done that too, but almost every song sounds like a different band, but they, they go so far out there every time, but it's always Deftones. I yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. I'm really I, like when they announced the tour, I texted my wife, like, Deftones announced the tour because we just talked about it last week. Like, yeah, yeah. man, we haven't seen Deftones in a minute. We need to go see him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my girlfriend literally an hour ago was like, hey, we have to go to this. We got to do it. It's next year. You have PTO. We're doing it. And I was like, yeah, we are. We're, gonna, we're, we're going to go. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm stoked to see them again. Like, I love that band, man. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're good. They're they're always good sometimes better than others but always good yeah well it's it's weird it seems like um you know it seems like chino has lost a lot of weight or something but he's his voice has gotten better like i know in performances over the years he's maybe been hit or miss sometimes never bad but like he's not quite hitting what he, yeah. he's capable of but dude he's just consistently fucking killing it lately and i Love but again. I think part of it now, like uh, if you go uh, last time they played that that little tiny amphitheater or the smaller huh. amphitheater, White River or whatever it is in, in Indianapolis, uh, we got there super early and he was out riding his bike. He like I feel like he rides his bike in every city yeah. now, which helps keep that, you know, that weight down because he did blow up there for a bit. That's oh, yeah. yeah probably the time he was getting off the drugs and going okay i gotta figure out what's going on i can only imagine yeah. what that must be like man especially to be like a touring musician and at that level like it's i'm i assume that it's fairly easy to have you know access to as much food booze and 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 drugs you want you can pretty much do whatever and you get back on the tour bus obviously yep. it's a grueling lifestyle but you don't really have to exercise or really do much except play every night and that's it so mm -hmm. I could definitely see how it'd be hard to stay in shape doing that now. For yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, it's it's but it's hard to stay in shape when you're not doing those things. Damn, that's so true, man. You know, yeah, we're like, it's, yeah. Yeah. Get the motive getting the motivation to do any extra work besides what you have to do to survive is pretty uh, hard sometimes. So for sure. <laughs> it kind of sucks, man. Yeah. told me it's gonna suck. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I knew growing up was gonna suck and I fucking <laughs> honestly it do it doesn't though like i'm having such a good time where i'm at yeah, yeah. well i mean you know it's it's part of it you know um you always say the this dude says the craziest most like <laughs> stupid bullshit thing i've ever heard but i love you to you because i made you repeat it yeah i you, just i always say that i can't wait to be an old man because like you know like if i get to the point when i'm an old man i'm probably hopefully going to be a little bit more like secure in my life, whether that be like financially or like I found like, you know, what it is that I've wanted to do fully. And like, I've got a good groove. And like, also when you get to the point where you're old, like people just excuse you doing absolutely do insane shit want. for being old, dude. Like you'll ever just see an old guy who's doing something off in the distance. You're like, just an old guy. Just hanging out, man. Oh, yeah. yeah like all over the lawn. Over I the just, just an old guy. That's, so. that's part of it. Like you've yeah. got to just not give it once you, you hit it in age where it's like, I really don't give a fuck what you think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've noticed that lately, man. I don't yeah. Know what that is. The releasing those inhibitions, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of freeing in that yeah. in that sense, you know. You it is. Stop putting on airs so much. You just go like, oh, you know, I'll be polite to you, but like, I'm not going to try so 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 hard to appease this person that I don't really care about. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's that's the beauty of getting old. Like, who gives a fuck? Sure. This is what I think. You know, I'm yeah. not hurting anyone. I'm yeah. not degrading anyone. I just, who gives a fuck? 
<laughs> I'm just exactly. chilling, bro. I'm just trying to do yeah. me right now. Right. I'm literally so, just trying to. Yeah. So back to back to you guys. We've had a lot of uh, killer conversation. Do I you guys? Say, have, we'll talk right? your ear off forever. Right, yeah, <laughs> we love we love bullshitting, dude. <laughs> Do you guys have like any goals or thresholds that you would like to meet with the latest release? I mean, you know, it's really hard. It's one of those things where it's really hard to give yourself goals and stuff like that. But I think that you know, for us, normally just peek behind the curtain here. Normally what we do is, you know, like you release something and then you take marketing measures to promote it and things sure. like that once it releases. For this release, since we felt like there was a lot of like buzz around our local scene with it, we were like, let's just cool it for a few weeks and see how it does on its own. Yeah. And it has been very, while it's not been astronomical numbers, the amount of organic interest that has been, uh, that has uh, been with it, not just here, but also like in places around us, like Louisville and stuff like that. It's been very uh, assuring to show that, nice. like, yeah, it's like, you know, so I think the big goal for us is, you know, having that genuine amount of like organic interest in the band, not just we've paid to put ads places and people have found out about us continually because of that. Yeah. Um, it's necessary, but yeah, it's, it's, like you said, it's it's good to see what comes of doing nothing at all besides here it is. And uh, yeah, I think it's been good so far. But yeah, now we're trying to do what we can with playlisting and, and all that stuff, you know, pitching it to a uh, bigger playlist to hopefully get some traction. And, you know, that always uh, it helps drive people to your music. And that's always cool. Um, have, you, have you guys thought about getting like a PR person? I mean, we've talked, we've definitely talked about it. That's something we have always joked about is that we need somebody who just like book shows for us. Cause that's the one thing we're all bad at. We really are cool. Like we love to talk about, like talk to people about music and stuff like that. But the minute that it kind of gets sort of uh businessy in the sense where it's like, Oh, Hey, like, you know, let us sell you on us as a band. Like that's yeah, something we're bad at it. <laughs> we're bad at that. We just like to chill and talk about music and stuff. So yeah, we definitely need to find, uh, some people who can help us with that aspect because not sound not sound conceited or anything but we feel like the product we have the music that we have uh, it stands on its own enough that if we can get it to people it can resonate with people we're just bad at finding avenues right. to get it to people so well you know it's I, I mentioned that because it it's really hard. Like I can only imagine what you know you guys have full time jobs and families oh, yeah. and you know doing plus all the bands that you're in. So it's not like you have a chance to really focus and go, okay, like today, this is what we're doing, blah, 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 you know, and knocking that shit out. So a, a PR person, you know, if, if you've got the money to do it, and I don't think that, I think you could get a PR person for, for very, very affordable, mm -hmm. like cost. Um, the right PR person can get you on those playlists get you more interviews, you know, get you out there in front of people, um, which when you do it yourself, it, you just, you have everything going on. You, you can't focus and, and get it done as, as well. No, you're, a, you're absolutely right. I think that's something that we've understood now. And that's something that I think we do have a goal going forward is trying to bring more people onto the team to kind of make it go sure. a little bit further as long as, you know, um, uh, having i think the thing for us is like we always want to make sure that we're you know keeping it 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 can be good and bad things we're trying to keep it reasonable to where it's like we're not overstretching what we're able to do to the point where you know we go way out on the limb and then because of it you know it sours relationships or something yeah. like that so we yeah. try to be very conscious about like this is what we can do right now and that's what we're gonna do like for instance you know i think a good example for us is like playing that show that you were at the uh the EP release show, that was like a, a really big deal for us because, um, you know, we uh, we got the offer for that show at like the end of July, which yep. we were already finishing up the EP at the time. And Lee, who's the promoter, Lee Garnett, he was like, hey, you guys are supposed to be having an EP coming out. I've got Extinction AD coming through. Do you guys want to hop on that show and have it be a release show? And we were like, absolutely this is the yeah. perfect like inspiration we need to finish this up because otherwise we're just kind of doing it whenever we want to right and just focusing we got it done by that point we were able to get cassettes made in time we're able to get like 
merch relevant to the release and like all of that stuff, which a lot of stuff that, you know, if you're like a listener, you might take for granted, but it's like, it's all logistical things you have to do to get that stuff together. Yeah. And that show for a number of reasons was like a really big goal that we were working towards and it went about as well as we could hope. Yeah. So I think for us, it's a lot of like little stuff like that, where it's like, we were, we recorded and released an EP almost entirely tracking it all in house, by the way. Yes. And uh, you know, we had a competent rollout for it, which is, you know, like we had, we had, you know, like visualizers and like all this stuff, you know? Uh, and I think the goal is with every release to keep doing that, but build it a little bit. And I think we've already got, you know, seven, eight songs uh, somewhat written for the next EP that yeah. we're working on. So like, it's just a matter of keeping the train rolling and try and do it soon enough to where people don't lose interest in you. So yeah. yeah, I would say the goal is to just to do, keep releasing music, but just marginally grow every time. And if you can just keep doing that, then eventually you'll get to the point where you're big enough to do really cool stuff that you want to do. And that's kind of our goal. So, yep. Yeah. Some of that is eating shit and going on tour and not making any money. One hundred percent. Yeah. Which that is, that is something we've, we in forthright as a band have never done. We've never actually gone on any tours or anything. That's something that we absolutely would love to do. But again, like I said, we try to be mindful about things that we know we can and can't do. And that's one of them that at this current point we're at, it's never currently made sense. Yeah. And, uh, but I think all of us agree that if there ever was an opportunity to do so and it made sense, we would absolutely be oh, yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've definitely done enough tours to where i've seen like okay you know there's enough hype behind this to be doing this this works but i've also done tours where you get out there and every show's in front of like 10 people and you're like why am i doing this <laughs> that i i yeah i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to be like i want to go on tour just to go on tour like you know it doesn't always work out <laughs> the way you right. want to you don't have the right following or the right hype behind you or, or whatever yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think again, right? I'm old, and <laughs> you you hear that, right? I hear bands say that, and I'm not saying go and do it. Be, if it doesn't sure. make sense for you, don't go do it. Um, yeah. But you know, I think back to the time when you know before there was an internet. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. You know, what did bands do? They went out and they went town to town to town oh, to yeah. town, and and grinded their their fan yeah. base up and i think uh that is in my mind that's a lot of what's missing today because yeah, that I like agree. those scenarios what do they do they teach you to work work together and harder as you know as the the band relationship you know you you hit those stressors and it's like okay we're either gonna make it we, through or hmm? or oh yeah <laughs> or we're not right uh, yeah. And it keeps the it helps the longevity of the band with the fan base because those grassroots fan bases are a lot more uh, they're a lot more invested in your success than someone who caught you on a TikTok for twenty seconds right. or whatever. Of course, yeah. actually seeing somebody it's like a real in, person, yeah, in person, it's it's meaningful. Actually, the act of being there, you know, you grow some sort of an attachment. It becomes personal, you know. Yeah. And I think it, it's a lot of that has to do with being mindful of <clears throat> the scenes in different places, too, because like, you know, this is something like I said, we're really only starting to try and get an understanding of this over the past couple of years. But like we know there's a couple of scenes around just the United States that are really popping off. So it's like, obviously, if we're going anywhere, we're going to want to go to those places because yes. that's where the cool shit's happening oh, yeah. and try and get to the point where we're known in those scenes with the heavy hitters there. And, uh, you know, just try and being willing to, like I said, make that journey and go someplace where, you know, cool stuff is happening so that you can try and contribute to it artistically. And yeah. I think that's the big goal for us is trying to find places where we feel like we can artistically contribute like what we're doing and people will be receptive of it. And also, uh, you know, it'll it'll be a good thing for both parties, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, so, but that's the little nuances of that. That's all stuff we're trying to learn right now. But I think that you summed it up perfectly. Like being able to do a, like an honest to goodness tour and hitting some of those really cool places we've been wanting to go, that's obviously a goal. 
We'd yeah. love to do it. Oh yeah. So Absolutely. what are what are some of those places you want to hit? Oh, I mean, I think the big one has got to be Alabama, like for, around yeah. that Birmingham area, where like where like No Cure is from. Uh, also, Cold Hard Steel bands like that, dude. There's some crazy shit happening there. Yes. Yeah, they just had like a. It was like a. Um, it was like Southeast Hardcore Show. It was on the same day as Fuchsia Fest. They literally had like 20 bands in this like, like fucking skate park esque place that was connected to like a like a pizzeria or something. And I was just sitting there watching videos from it. And I'm like, this is so insane. It was literally yeah. like, you know, 100 plus kids packed into this little glass room that had like a stage. And it was right. just so cool. It was just so sick to see. Yes. Like, you know, and like, like people of all ages, like little kids, like older, like older people, uh, as well as, of course, you know, like when we say younger, we usually mean like 16 to 24 year olds, mm -hmm. all doing stage dives, like. People obviously just got off work from their FedEx jobs in uniform doing yeah. stage dives and shit. I'm like, that is that is awesome. Like yeah. that is what you really want. You want everybody coming together to enjoy this because it's just a good time. So definitely, I think that's number one on our list. We'd love to get down to Birmingham. Yeah, that'd be cool. Play uh, some good shows. Well, it sounds like sounds like you guys just need to take a long weekend and make that happen because you're yes. yeah, you'd have to discuss doing that yeah. if we're able to make it work you know we've talked about you know doing something like that with like nashville and louisville or nashville or, and louisville too with the closer scenes yeah yeah uh well we haven't played louisville since uh uh, oh my god what was that place? tiger room tiger room like 2018 we played a show in louisville yeah so yeah. we haven't really got to play any with like the hardcore scene since we put out this kind of music so yeah yeah we're definitely wanting to get back down there again um but yeah i don't know long term like if we ever got to play like anything in the bay area yeah i mean that's obviously <laughs> that's, a big, nuts, that's but... obviously a big a big uh, a big goal as well that's a little bit further away though so yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I, I can't mean, really do a weekend run there unless you're paying to fly out there. True. So. See, and then it's like, how are you going to fly all your gear out there? So, right. so, yeah. I mean, there's definitely stuff we've talked about. Another thing we do have to consider, which is one of our guitarists, Cade, the one who I mentioned doesn't live here, it's because he lives in Murray because he is still currently in college. So, yep. so, yeah, I can't really be doing anything unless it's during the summers. Yes. So, at least not anything like that. We were going to be doing any runs and stuff like that. But we got like a couple more years from being in college. And then, you know... Fingers crossed. Well, the plan is hopefully try to like once he's getting out of college and there's some other stuff in our personal lives we're getting through, trying to set the stage so that once we get to that point, we can actually like make a more honest to goodness run at it if we see fit, you yeah. know. So it's all all the building blocks right now. So Yeah, hopefully. well, I think you guys are in a you know, in a good position. Once once he's, you know, ready to go, I think you guys would have built a super solid like fan base and be able to go okay we're definitely going to go do like a four-day run and hit blah 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 yeah yes so i think that's a fucking great idea um okay uh guys i'm gonna say thank you um thank you man thank thanks you. so much my day starts at four so i'm like you're good. Uh, no. Damn, hey, we'll talk you off forever, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, I greatly appreciate you guys taking time out to come hang out and chat with me. Yeah, um, of course. I look forward to hearing what the new stuff is that you guys are working on come together. Thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be pretty cool. Hopefully we're hopefully we'll get it out sooner rather than later. That's kind of, you know, we're we're already working on it, so hopefully it should be out pretty soon for everybody to hear. Hell yeah. Well, that's great. Guys, have yourself a great night. Yeah, you as well. Take Thanks. it easy, man. See ya.